Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to be here on behalf of my co-authors. The title of my talk is Early Intervention with Sequokinumab May Affect Establishment of Tissue Memory and Psoriasis, Results from a DNA Methylation Analysis. So these are the uh, our disclosures. So it's a brief introduction. So we're all very familiar with uh, the biologics targeting the IL-17A pathway are highly efficacious for the treatment of plaque psoriasis. However, psoriatic lesions often recur after cessation of treatment, potentially via tissue memory-driven mechanisms. So our hypothesis was that early intervention with sequokinumab in new onset psoriasis may lead to sustained skin clearance by preventing the uh, establishment of tissue memory. So this was part of the mechanistic sub-study of the step-in clinical trial, and, and the goal was to assess molecular changes in the skin of patients with new onset, which we define as less than one year, versus chronic, which we define as more than five years of, of, of disease activity, and patients with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis treated with sequikinumab. And we compared the gene expression and also the DNA methylation profile at different uh, time points. Previous results from this study had shown that lesional transcriptomes of baseline were relatively similar between the new onset and the chronic uh, cohorts. However, sequokinumab induced normalization of both global gene expression and IL-17 pathway signatures compared to non-lesional levels occurred faster in patients with new onset versus chronic psoriasis. So in here, we uh, present data from the, uh, the step in mechanistic stop study with uh, which demonstrates the impact of treatment with sequokinumab up to week 52 to DNA methylation patterns in skin from patients with new onset versus chronic uh, psoriasis. So the methods, uh, we included uh, adults, like I mentioned before, with new onset, which, which we define as less than one year, and patients with a chronic plaque psoriasis greater than five years. Uh, we're treated with a sequokinum of 300 milligrams up to uh, 104 weeks. The uh, as you can see in table one down here, this is the, uh, the core composition of, of our study, uh, both in terms of new onset psoriasis and chronic psoriasis, and the number of biopsy samples per timeline, including baseline week 16 and week 52 for both lesional and non-lesional as shown over here. To assess the differences in DNA methylation, we used the uh, genome-wide uh, uh, genomic DNA uh, platform, uh, Illumina Inf In Infinium, the EPIC microarray, which covers about 850,000 uh, CPG sites. So the DNA methylation patterns of baseline biopsies for both new onset and chronic patients are shown in this slide. Uh, and in the, uh, the heat map on the uh, right, you can see the chronic ones here in red, the new onset ones in the blue. You can see the baseline um, samples here in deep red and the, uh, the weak non-lesional 52 week uh, here in lighter red uh, for known genes uh, for genes with known functional relevance to, to plaque psoriasis. And these were quite similar and aligned with expected disease related patterns in terms of uh, differential uh, in, in terms of differential methylated CPGs. Uh, we also overlaid the differentially methylated uh, CPGs to known psoriasis susceptibility genes using these four different uh, data sets of known uh, SNP associated with psoriasis. And this shown as uh, showed a significant overlap with established disease-specific uh, gene loci for plaque psoriasis. However, as you can see over here, these were very similar between both the chronic and new onset psoriasis. Looking at the differences in resolution of gene expression and DNA methylation in lesional skin of new onset and chronic psoriasis over time showed these differences that you can see over here. This is looking at the uh, gene expression in the epidermis uh, in the chronic and the new onset patients. And you can see at week 52, both are completely normalized, but in the new onset patients, this normalization actually is more rapid. In contrast, looking at DNA methylation in a full thickness biopsy, you can see they're fairly marked uh, different, different uh, differences in methylation patterns uh, between new onset and chronic at, at baseline. But at week 52, it's completely gone or normalized in the, uh, the new onset patients, where there's a residual uh, methylation patterns in the chronic lesions uh, suggesting that this may represent a tissue memory. To kind of address the, uh, the key pathways that are upregulated in lesional skin at baseline and week 16 uh, versus the non-lesional skin at week 52, these pointed to methylated DNA regions that were associated with TH17 cell differentiation and certain inflammatory pathways, including TNF and T cell receptor signalings. 
And as shown over here in this uh, dot matrix, uh, these pathways were normalized by sequokinumab in both the new onset and chronic psoriasis cohorts. In contrast, looking at the uh, enrichment of uh, transcription factor families in, in, in differentiated methylated regions in the two cohorts, what we saw in the, uh, the new onset, um, the factors that were normalized actually were quite different from the ones in the chronic cohort with enrichment of pathways involved in, uh, U, uh, in, in PU1 uh, signaling, uh, IRF4, and also IKCF1. In contrast, the pathways that were or transcription factor pathways that are enriched in the chronic plaque psoriasis, including the stress responsive AP1 family members, including uh, June and FOS. So just as a, as a, as a conclusion, so uh, cyclokinumab reverses differential, differential DNA methylation to non-lesional levels only in the lesional skin of patient with new onset psoriasis. In the chronic cord, residual DNA methylation remains suggesting the existence of an epigenetic molecular scar in patient with chronic psoriasis. Intersecting differentially methylated regions with known psoriasis functional CBGs and psoriasis genetic risk loci, coupled with enrichment of pathways and transcription factor binding site motifs, provide first, provide first insight into and functional annotation of the molecular mechanisms underlying the tissue memory that is hypothesized to drive recurrence of, of plaque psoriasis. And these data indicate that early intervention with sequokinumab may lead to sustained disease modifications by ameliorating an epigenetically encoded scar in psoriatic skin. So thank you for listening. JT. <clears throat> JT. This was a great talk, Johan. Now I wanted to, I may have missed it, but the acute or the early on or early psoriasis versus chronic, yep. were they matched for the disease severity? Yes, they were, they were about the same. Okay. Because I was just, if it wasn't as bad to start with, then it might, that might be the cause of the scar. But if they were the that's same. That's a very good point. But yes, good. it was the same. And, and also, if you look at the gene expression profile, it actually was the same at baseline also. Kind of an, another validation that the cores are otherwise fairly comparable. So uh, Thomas Greyer from Austria. I have a question. Uh, I believe that's the step-in study compared sequokinumab and narrowband UVB um, treatment. Did you perform this anal analysis also for the uh, UVB-treated patients? And did you see any uh, similar results for the newly developed psoriasis compared to the long-lasting patients? Yeah, very good question. We have not yet compared these, you know, with the uh, UVB. Just a very short last question at the back. Thank you, very nice talk. Uh, I'm wondering if you compared the actual clinical response at, at week 52 for the patient who's uh, in the short, uh, in the within one year versus yeah, the, the chronic, onset, like yeah. if you actually compare the clinical response, are they similar within that two cohort? The new ones that patients typically respond better. And, and I think that's consistent across all the studies that have, have kind of looked at it also with the, um, 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 no, I'm, I'm blanking out the- um, Guide study. Yes, thank you. And I'm, I'm wondering, do you think that that differences that you still see in the methylation, do you think that plays a role in the relapse? I don't know if you, know, if you withdraw the drug and you actually monitor and see whether this patient maintain their remissions. So we haven't proven that, but again, the data certainly would indicate it. This is clinically normal, completely normal skin and, and, and completely cleared. So they're very comparable. And we do, we believe that most of these different these kind of resi residual kind of uh, epigenetic or, or methylation changes actually are in the keratinocytes. Um, so yes, we, we think that it's, it's something that kind of predisposes to relapse. Thank you.